So, dear brothers, last week uh, we studied uh, about a few things about our Lord's uh, uh, second coming. Mainly, we studied about the dates, uh, how our uh, uh, Lord's uh, second presence uh, has happened uh, in uh, 1874. That is uh, based on the prophecy that is given to us in the book of uh, uh, Daniel chapter 12. <clears throat> you see, where it means, uh, it tells about the three dates. Uh, that is uh, 1260 days and 1290 days and 1335 days. So if you see, uh, there uh, three dates are given and all the three dates actually begin from the uh, same starting point. Uh, Gopal brother, can you tell me what is the starting point of uh, all these dates? It began from which year? 5, 539 AD. Very good, 539 AD. So actually what happened in 539 AD? Like that uh, Roman Empire uh, Good. And, mm. uh, invented the mass. Yes. Like, right. uh, so the three horns uh, that is mentioned in Daniel 7 chapter that fell uh, in actually in 539. And that is the very year that the uh, abomination of desolate that was set up. That means the conduction of the mass frequently instead of uh, doing it uh, yearly. So from that 539, if you calculate 1260 days, it comes to 1799. We all know very well that in 1799, the Antichrist period ended. <clears throat> that was uh, during the uh, Reformation. And uh, from uh, 539, if you calculate uh, 1290 days, it comes to 1844. So 1844, what happened, brother? Can you tell me? 1844, some important movement happened. Which was that movement? A Miller movement. Very good. Uh, Miller moment. Uh, so what did uh, William Miller tell? What did he claim? When will Jesus return? He claimed that um, he claimed that Jesus will uh, coming in flesh soon. Yes. Okay. So he claimed that uh, Jesus will return 1844. Okay. Some 30 years before actually Jesus was supposed to return. So then what happened? Uh, that was a very great awakening call. Many of the Christians uh, would hold everything to follow Jesus Christ only for a pretend sake, uh, only to pretend to be Christians. Uh, they all went back into the world uh, and to claim all their, uh, you see, uh, what do you say? The what are things they gave off uh, and uh, forgave. They uh, went uh, back to the world to claim it, everything. So once uh, that happened, uh, you see, there was a great filtration among the Christians, uh, the real followers of Christ. Uh, and the uh, uh, imitating uh, uh, Christians were uh, actually bifurcated. So that was told in the parable of uh, Matthew 25th chapter where the bride bridegroom tarried. So that clearly shows that there will be a, um, a time in God's plan that uh, there will be a great expectations of the Lord's second coming and that it would be a failure. And actually the Lord would come the some other time. So if you see the Lord, uh, you see, he came at a very important time. It says in Matthew 25th chapter, and when, the, when was the great call given? What was the great sound uh, came? It came in the night. What what time of the night, brother? Matthew 25th chapter, it says, no? There was a... Huh? Midnight, brother. Very good. Midnight. So midnight means that's the time when the day actually changes. Uh, okay? The previous day changes to the uh, present day. So that is the time that the 6,000 years ended and the 1,000 years uh, began. So it exactly shows that... Uh, in uh, 1874, Christ was supposed to return. So, it was not in 1844, but actually Christ came in 1874. Why the 30 years difference? If you see, uh, it's the same thing happened at the Christ first advent. Uh, you see, Christ was uh, supposed to uh, 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 present uh, or be in the midst of Israel as Messiah. That means the entire uh, Jewish nation sought for the Messiah, the king, the prince, when he was born. Everybody thought that uh, in Bethlehem, uh, you see, the Messiah is born. But the crime, but Messiah was not born at that time. It was Jesus who was born. So when was uh, uh, Jesus became the Messiah? If you see, it was 30 years after at the baptism. So there was a difference of 30 years between the expectation of the Jewish people and the actual, you see, uh, presenting of the Messiah to the Jewish people. So similarly, at the second advent, there's a 30 years difference where... Uh, the whole world expected Jesus to be present as a uh, returned Lord. 
But he actually appeared uh, 30 years later. That's what is given in the Matthew 25th ch chapter parable. Okay. So these things are very clear. And uh, we got some other proofs also. God willing, we will be sharing it uh, in uh, some higher classes, uh, which we will be presenting in the future classes. But not, now, let us uh, go on to see more uh, uh, clarity. Did uh, Jesus uh, ever uh, uh, tell about his uh, second uh, coming anywhere in the Bible? If you see, yes, uh, Jesus has told about his second coming, that uh, when he is going to return, when he is going to be in this earth atmosphere, about his parasha and all is given uh, in the Bible in various places. So today, we are going to see uh, those few verses also. Okay. So before that one, you see, we need to understand uh, some things. Actually, in a week, uh, there are actually seven days. Okay. And uh, the last day of the week uh, is always called as the last day. And that was actually the Sabbath day. See, the Jewish uh, people, for them, the week actually began with uh, which day? Is it Monday or uh, which day? Saturday, Sabbath. Saturday was a Sabbath. It was, was it the first day or the last day? Last day. Very good. So Saturday was the last day. Then which is the first day of the week? Sunday. Very good. That's the first day of the week. So the week for the Jewish people began on the Sunday and ended on the Saturday. So let us read a few verses for more clarity. Uh, John 7, 2 and John 7, 37, brother. John 7, 2. Hmm. Now the Jewish feast of tabernacles was at hand. Hmm. See? Read, read, brother. Read completely again. Now the Jewish feast of tabernacles was at hand. Hmm. You continue, brother. Continue. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that they disciple thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. Okay. Now what do you say? The feast of the tabernacle was at hand. So the feast of the tabernacle was a feast for seven days. Okay, so that is given in Leviticus 23rd chapter. Even you are free, you can read it. So it was a feast for seven days. Okay, so it began with the first day of the week and ended in the last day of the week. Now read verse 37, brother. Read verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me. And drink. Ah, okay, brother. Now he says, on the last day. You see? The last day. So when was the last day? If you see, that was the day of the Sabbath. So, if you see in this chart, you can clearly know that uh, there are seven days uh, in a week. And the last day was called as the seventh day. Okay? Now, you tell me, for Jesus Christ, a day means how many years? For Jesus, a day means how many years? 1,000 years. Very good. For Jesus, a day means 1,000 years. So, in this chart, if you see, now we can tell that in a week, there are seven days means, so for Jesus, each day is a 1,000 a years means, then this can be compared to a 7,000 year period also. Isn't it? So, each day means... A thousand year period of seven parts or seven days of seven thousand years. Or if you divide seven thousand years by thousand years, you get seven, you see, days, isn't it? So, as Jesus did so many things in a week, how the Feast of Tabernacle was happening on the week, beginning with the first day of the week and ending with the Sabbath day. So similarly, Jesus tells that uh, many things will happen in the last day. You might have read so many contexts in the Bible. You see, last day, last day, these things will happen. Last day, this thing will happen. Last day, that thing will happen. Correct, no, brother? Yes, brother. Uh, so which is the last day Jesus was referring? If you see, Jesus was referring 
to this, uh, you see, a week. In a week, uh, you see, when we refer to the last day, it actually refers to the last day of the week, that is the Sabbath day. That was actually a rest day for the Jewish people. So similarly, when uh, Christ is going to return, you see, he is going to rule for a thousand years. Uh, you see, and uh, that uh, thousand years, uh, you see, uh, is the uh, rule of Christ. And that is the great Sabbath where the entire people of this world will have rest. Rest from what? Rest from sin, sickness, sorrow, everything. So, that is the last day. Now, in this last day, what will happen? Let us read a few scriptures. Brother. Read, in the last day, the resurrection of the church will happen. John 6.44, brother. John 6.44. John 6, 44. Hmm. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Hmm. You see? Huh? So, they will raise him on the last day. So, he's speaking about actually the church. Isn't it? He's speaking of the church that the words God has given to Christ, none of them shall he lose, but each of them shall be raised in the last day. This shows about the resurrection about the, you see, the church. Okay? Now, this will happen in the last day. That means the last thousand years period. Similarly, the resurrection of the world also will happen in the same period. Read John 11, 24, brother. John 11, 24. John 11, 24. Hmm. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Ah, you see? See, Jesus actually came here for the raising Lazarus from the dead. And that time, what did Martha reply? He said, she said that actually, I know the Lord that, uh, you see, when all people are resurrected in the last day, similarly at that time, Lazarus also will come in the, you see, general resurrection. So, when will the resurrection for the whole world happen? It will happen on the last day. Okay, brother? Now, not only the resurrection, but the judgment also for the world should happen in the last day. Bro, read John 12, 48, brother. John 12, 48. Uh, Gopal, brother, can you read? Sure, brother. Uh, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have, the the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. See, the word shall judge him in the last day. So everybody shall be judged as per the Bible when in the last day. So when is the last day? We are seeing that that is the you see thousand year reign of Christ. So God has permitted first six thousand years of sin, where everybody are permitted to work this sin and receive this wages. That is death. The wages of sin is death. But in the thousand years, you see, nobody are permitted to work the same work of sin which they did for the six thousand years. So the last day, always in the Bible, refers to the thousand year reign of Christ. Okay. Now, why we are, you see, trying to pictureize this one is that as in a week there are seven days. So similarly, you see, in God's plan, in the 7,000 years uh, can be divided into 7 parts. Uh, that is 6,000 plus uh, 1,000 year part. Each, uh, you see, 1,000 years of uh, equal uh, spaces. Okay? Now, let us read John 2.19, brother. John 2.19, brother. Jesus Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Hmm. See, Jesus is here saying that uh, destroy this temple and I shall raise it up. So we know very well that uh, Jesus was not uh, speaking about a literal uh, temple because literal temple, he took, uh, you see, uh, almost uh, uh, 46 years to build it. So, suddenly the people were uh, surprised. You see, read verse uh, 20. Huh. 
Then said the Jews, put in six years was this temple in building and will you rear it up in three days? Ah, will you build it in three days? So Jesus was not speaking about the literal temple, the building. He was actually speaking about the body, his body. Read, brother. Read verse 21. Huh? No, no, but he spoke of the temple of his body. Ah, he spoke of the temple of his body. So this verse clearly says that when the Christ's body, his temple shall be raised. Now, who are the uh, body of Christ? You tell me. Who is who are the temple of Christ? Church. Church. Very good. So we. So who are the church means we? So we are the temple of God. We are the church of God. We are the body of Christ. So Jesus was telling to the Jews, you destroy my body. You destroy my church. No problem. But I will raise it when? In how many days? After three days. Ah, you see? He, he said, he, he did not say after three days. What did he say? Read verse 19, brother. Go for brother, read. Ah. Uh, in three days. In three days. Okay? So that means, in the third day, what should happen? Da? There should be a resurrection of the church. Just now we read now, when will the resurrection of the church happen? It will happen in the last day. Correct now? So which is the last day? That is the 7,000 year period. Correct now? Now let us cross check it. How this has got... Uh, Correlation with the second coming of Jesus. Okay, brother. Now, read. see the chart here. See, for Jesus, each huh, day is a thousand years. So, 6,000 years means how many days? Six days. Very good, brother. 6,000 years means six days. Very good. Now, when did Jesus come? Jesus came at uh, 4,128 years since the creation of Adam. Correct, no? Yes, sir. That means, you would have come at this point. See, from the beginning of uh, creation of Adam, 1,000 years, 2,000 years, 3,000 years, 4,000 years, 4,128 years means this, uh, in the fifth thousand year, from the creation of Adam, Jesus would have, you see, came at the first advent. And that period was the first day for Jesus. At After his first advent. After his first advent, that was the first day for Jesus. So what did Jesus say to the Jewish people? Destroy my temple. In three days, I will build it up. So from the first advent of Jesus, three days means 3,000 years we need to calculate. See? Fifth day is the first 1,000 years. Sixth day is the second 1,000 years. And the third day is which one? The seventh 1,000 years. It is in the seventh 1,000 year or at the second advent of Jesus when the thousand years will begin, that is the time that the church, the dead church, will be raised again back to life. So Jesus was giving a prophecy not only about the resurrection of the church, but also he gave a time prophecy when the resurrection of his body also will happen. Got it, brother? Gopal, brother, is it clear? Yes, brother, yes. Okay. See, uh, there are a few more verses. We'll see it again. It will be more clear to you. Okay? Okay, brother. So, let us read one more verse. Luke 13, 32. Luke 13, 32. Mm. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils and I do curses to do and tomorrow and the third day I shall be perfected. Ah, see, same words. Go and tell this to that fox. Herod, okay? 
that today and tomorrow what i will do what you will do today and tomorrow i cast out devils i cast out devils in the third day i will be perfected perfected so he said not day will be perfected he said i will be perfected that means jesus is actually speaking the same work what he is going to do in the church in his body by calling the disciples to the truth by opening their eyes and ears of understanding he is casting out the devil the evil spirit within us and anointing the church with the holy spirit this work is going on from the first advent of christ to the second advent of christ for a period of 2000 years that is two days and jesus said i will do this work for two days in the third day i will be perfected see same thing since the first advent of christ you see the first 1000 years second 1000 years and the third 1000 years is the seventh day when he shall be perfected so again it is a indirect time prophecy referring that when jesus will return and uh, you see he shall bless the church there is one more prophecy let us read in osia 6 chapter verses 1 to 3 with us osia 6 chapter verses 1 to 3 hmm. come and let us return unto the lord for he hath torn and he will heal us he hath smitten and he will bind us up mm. after two days mm. he will he revive us in the third day he will raise up uh, us up and we shall live in his sight his sight Then, yes read it in the other version it says we shall live in his presence this prophecy of osia is actually speaking about the nation of israel he says god has torn us us he has smitten us huh? he has wounded us but uh, for how many days for two days but in the third day what will happen it seems uh, their wounds shall be bound they shall be you see gathered they shall be established and they shall live in the sight of god so this is actually speaking about the nation of israel once uh, they killed jesus and crucified on the cross the nation of israel was destroyed so there was no nation of israel in the world map for how many years for a period of 2000 years we have studied now the class on israel brother we have finished that one no? class of israel have we taken the class of israel ashish brother have you finished it we have not we have not taken brother we haven't taken yeah okay I, i have not finished it sure yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay then next week we'll see that one okay not a problem we'll see so so what happened the 2000 years uh, since the first advent of christ uh, the two days israel was no more in world map uh, but uh, since the second advent of christ uh, since 1874 on the world map uh, the nation of israel was found and israel began to be gathered uh, and may 14 1948 uh, israel got their independence so this is again one bible prophecy where jesus is telling that how the nation of israel will be gathered on the third day since his first advent of uh, you see on the earth uh, okay so let us read one more prophecy with us uh, that is given in luke uh, 12 chapter 38 uh, luke 12 chapter verse uh, 35 read from verse 35 to verse 38 brother huh? okay let your light be guarded about and your lights burning and you yourselves like unto men that wait for their lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knock they may open unto him immediately mm. blessed are the servants see it says what does it say 
Huh? And you yourself, like unto men that wait for the Lord. You be prepared as if you are waiting for the Lord. Be a servant who is waiting for the Lord. That's what Jesus guides us and instructs the church to be waiting for the Lord's second coming. Now, next, what happens? Huh? When the Lord Blessed comes, the... what happens? Verse 37. Huh? Blessed are the servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Really, I say unto you that he shall guard himself and make them sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Ah, see, when Christ returns, if he finds anybody who was watching, what will the Lord do? It seems, huh? the Lord would actually guard himself and make the servant to sit for meat and serve him. It seems, huh? this is what actually Jesus is doing now. Keep your hand here only. Read Revelation 3.21. Revelation 3.20. Sorry, Revelation 3.20. Gopal brother, can you read Revelation 3.20? Sure, brother. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, he man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Uh -huh. Same words. Yeah, what did Jesus say? Behold, I stand at. Huh? Where is Jesus standing? At the door. At the door. That means what? Not far away. He is standing at the heart's door and knocking. The bridegroom returned. You see, in Revelation 6 chapter, sorry, 6th church and all, if you see, he says Jesus is coming very soon, very soon, very soon. Correct now? But when he's speaking about the 7th church, you see, Jesus said that he is at the door. Read Revelation 3. <coughs> 11. 3, 11, brother. About the 6th church. Uh. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast uh, that no man take thy crown. Uh, see, I come quickly, he said. But uh, did he say the same words for the 7th church? No, he said, Behold, I stand at the door. And knock. If anybody opens the door, I will come and sup with him. That is what Jesus is doing. You see, when will Jesus come? What is his time? The, what is the return of the master's time? Now continue to read Luke 12 chapter. From where you stopped, read Luke 12 chapter. Uh. Verse 38, 37. Hmm. Blessed are the servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall guard himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, ah, or come in the third down. watch. Wait, wait, wait. Note it down. Underline. He says, when the master will return, he might come in the second watch or he might come in the third watch. Ah, continue with that. And find them so, blessed are the servants. Ah, blessed are the servants. Now, what is the time that the master will return? What is the watch? What is the time that he gave? Which watch? Second or third watch? Second or third watch. Now, which is this watch? Oh, your brother, we got only one watch in our hand. Which is Jesus speaking of watch? There was which was in during those days. Now, we should see what is the meaning of watch in the Bible. For the Bible, what is the dictionary? Which is the dictionary, brother? Bible itself. Very good. How do we study the Bible? Here a little? Very little. Very good. Read Psalms 90. 90 verse 14. Psalms 90 verse 4. Chapter 90 verse 4. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Aha. A thousand years is in the sight of the Lord as a watch of a night. Uh -huh. Now, what did Jesus say? He might return when? Second or which watch? Third watch. Third watch. The same thing, dear brother. See? You can see clearly in this chart. First thousand years from the first advent of Christ and the second thousand years from the first advent of Christ. He might come in the second or third. That means as soon as the second watch was over, there was a midnight. The third watch was a new day, a new thousand years. That is the time that Jesus returned 
You see? Now, why did not Jesus speak exactly the date? Because Jesus was not proved his faithfulness to God on the cross. So, until such time, he knew some things vaguely, but not exactly clearly. That's what Jesus said in Mark 13 chapter. That day and that hour, only the Father in heaven knows. So, therefore, he gave us a vague picture. You see? Hey, you say, what do you say? Hey, approximate. You see, understanding that he will return at this period. We should be very alert. Now, let us read one more verse. Mark 13 chapter, brother. Mark 13 chapter, verse 34 and 35, brother. Huh? Uh, you got it, brother? Go on, brother. Ashish, brother, you got it? Mark 13 chapter, 34 and 35. Huh? Yes, brother. Uh, read 34. Man, uh, hmm. For the son of man is as a man talking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servant and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Ah, uh, wait. Now, this is speaking about a Jesus Christ going to heaven to receive a kingdom for himself and return at the second advent. So, he went away at the first advent. Correct, no? Now, when he is going to return? What is the time he is going to return? Read next verse, 35. It says, uh, Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh. Ah, now this one, read very carefully. When will the master come? Hmm. At even. At even. That means evening. He might come in the evening. Then next. Or at midnight. Ah, midnight. Then. Huh? Or at the cock crow, crowing. Cock, cock crowing. Huh? Then. Or in, or in the morning. Or in the morning. Four times are given. Huh? He might come in the evening, midnight, cock crowing, or morning. You tell me, when does the day, day changes? Evening or cock crowing? Cock, cock when crowing. does the day change? Is it in the evening? Is it in the midnight? Or is it when the cock crows? I'll repeat the question again. When does the day change? Listen carefully. When does the day change actually? Is it in the evening? Is it in the midnight? Or is it when the cock crows early in the morning? Midnight. Huh? Midnight. Midnight. Correct. Go for you got it now. Midnight. When do we celebrate the new year? Uh, at 12 midnight. Uh, why midnight? Because huh? just because the cock is crowing in the morning, uh, does it mean that it will uh, morning will happen only in the uh, that means the day will begin only at 6 p.m. 6 a.m. Uh? No. The cock is sleeping, what to do? <laughs> so that is his fault. Uh? But when does the day change? Actually, when does the day begin? In midnight. That is the time that Jesus returned. Matthew 25th parable. You see, uh, what happened uh, the, when the 10 virgins were sleeping? When was the loud cry heard? At midnight. Very good. So why midnight? That is the time when the 6,000 years ended. Got it, brother? 6,000 years ended, 1,000 years began. Got it, brother? Yes, brother. Uh, now read <coughs> Revelation 22, 12. And behold, I come quickly and my Okay, Lord... thank you. Behold, I come? Quickly. Quickly. Now, why did Jesus tell I'll come quickly? Coming after 2000 years, very quickly, yeah. Huh? Tell me. Coming after 2000 years, is it quickly? No. Ah, now, I'll present it under another angle, you think. See, you, you, you have some family members in your house. Imagine if you're going for any uh, tour or visiting any uh, outside, your parents or your family members might ask, when you're going to return, what will you tell them? You will tell them. Uh, can you tell them the exact uh, date and hour exactly when you will go to return? No. 
No. What we will tell? We will tell in two, three days I will come back. Or else I will come very fast. Very quickly I will come back. Very soon I will come back. This is what Jesus said. You see, for us, one day is thousand years. Correct? Huh? Jesus is one day for us is thousand years. But ours thousand years for Jesus is how many days? One day. One day. That's the word Jesus is trying to say to the church. I will come very soon in two or three days. Wait. Don't worry. Wait. I'll, if I go, I will come very soon. I will go and prepare a place and come and take you in two, three days. In two, three days, I will catch the devil. I will build my church. I will raise my church. I will, I will regather Israel. I will come in the evening watch or in the night watch. You keep on watching. This is the way the Bible has to be understood. Now, you think, is it very clear or not? Huh? Very clear. That's what Jesus said. Huh? Be as a servant who watch for the master's return. Now, did Jesus come very soon? No. The church is expecting the Jesus second advent very lately, not understanding the Bible at all. A day for the Lord, you see, is a thousand years. A thousand years is as the day. That means the two thousand years that is passed away, it is nothing but two days. That's what Jesus said. I will come within two days. Don't worry. Okay? Now, is it clear, brother? Gopal brother, Ashish brother, is it clear? Yes, brother. Uh, now, now, there are other Greek words which we need to understand in the Bible. Till now, we have studied about the parousia. But there is the other Greek word, other two Greek words. One is epiphania and one is apocalypsis. Now, what is this epiphania? Epiphania actually means the bright shining. See, we just have read the verse. The master might return in midnight or when the cock crows or when the morning why the three periods are given? See, midnight is a period when the Lord actually returned. Okay? So, he is written in the midnight itself. But, uh, you see, when will the people come to Noah? When will the... Uh, see, sun actually, the day begins. But does it mean that as soon as the midnight uh, happens, the sun is on the... You see, sky? Can we see in the sky, the sun at midnight? Can we see, brother? No. No. When will the sun be visible? That is, when the sun is visible, immediately the cock will crow. You know, what does it mean? That is the first stage of Lord's first, second advent. You see, when the Lord returned invisibly as a sun, when he began to rise, immediately there was a huh, cock crowing. Behold the son of man, Parosia. Now, who comes to know about the parousia? Only the people who hear the cocks crowing early in the morning or awake, only those people can recognize the parousia. Now, there is another two time period given in that verse. It says, other is when? Huh? Huh? Morning. Morning means what? Which, what time? We can say 9 o'clock uh, that time. And by afternoon, everybody will come to know. So, this second period is called as epiphania. The word actually epiphania means the bright shining. Actually, if you see the period what we are living now is epiphania. We are already past the parousia period and we are living in a very bright and very clear shining period where, where we can clearly say that we are living in the day of the Lord. Nobody can disclaim it. Nobody can... Uh, Reject it at all because there's very clear signs of the regathering of Israel. Knowledge has increased. Man is running to and fro. Very clear, bright, shining. So much of trouble is happening in this world. A great time of trouble. What we spoke in the Bible, all these things are happening in the Ephesians. This is a very bright, clear sign that we are living in the day of Ephesians. Okay? Now, for that verse, we will read one verse. 2 Thessalonians 2.8. 2 Thessalonians 2.8, brother. 2 Thessalonians 2.8, brother. 
Anybody can read. Uh. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Ah, uh, he shall destroy with the brightness of his uh, coming. That word brightness is epiphenia. And that word coming is parosha. This verse says that the great antichrist system shall be destroyed at the epiphenia of his parosia. That means the bright shining of his parosia in that period itself, the antichrist system will be destroyed. So we are approaching that period. Okay. So we are approaching that period where uh, we are not in epiphenia, but we are approaching the period of the destruction of the antichrist. The antichrist again will shortly, you see, uh, come to power and uh, rise to power. That will be only for a few moments. But uh, uh, suddenly, what will happen? As per this verse, uh, it is based upon the bright shining of the truth uh, that the system will be totally collapsed. Now, next, what will happen? After the collapse of the Antichrist, the whole people will come to know that uh, Jesus is the one who is ruling invisibly. And that period is called as apocalypsis in the Bible. The word apocalypsis means something which was hidden is now brought to light completely. Okay? So something which was hidden now, it is it is brought to light more clearly. Okay? And uh, that is given to us in Luke uh, 17 chapter. Luke 17 chapter <coughs> verses 26. Read from verse 26 to 30. We will see. This is actually speaking about uh, uh, first how the parasha will happen. Next, how, you see, after the epiphania, the last apocalypsis will happen, the spirit is given there. Now read, with her, read verse 26. Hmm. And as it was and, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the son of man. Ah, as it was in the days of Noah. Noah was present. Similarly, in the days of son of man, son of man shall be present. So this is the parousia, presence. Noah was presence. In his presence, the flood came. Jesus' presence, in his presence, the second world will be destroyed. In his presence, the first world was destroyed. In his presence, the second world will be destroyed. In Noah's presence, the first heaven and the first earth was destroyed. It was totally corrupt with the fallen angels and the giants of this world. Similarly, you see, the second world, the end of the second world, there is a heaven and the earth. Who is ruling in the heaven invisibly? Who is the prince of the power of the air? Satan. <laughs> Satan and the fallen angel. Oh, Jesus God. is come now to destroy them. How? By fire. Not literal fire. There it was a little water. But here it is a not literal fire. It is a symbolic fire of destruction. You see, destruction, destroying the uh, uh, plans, uh, purposes, evil aims, ambitions, all corruption. You see, all evil things of this world, it can be only burnt in fire. Because something that is put to fire can never be restored back at all. It is totally vacuumized. So that's what uh, Jesus says that uh, this is going to be destroyed. So what is going to be destroyed? In Noah's days, who was there? The chains were there. Correct? Huh? Now how did the chains come into formation? Who both joined together to form a giant? Tell me. All angels. All right. Angels, angels and, and women. Very good, brother. Angels and women. Was it a legal uh, a marriage? Can an angel marry a woman? No. No. It is illegal. That means a fallen angel marrying a woman, mixing with human breed, is called as hybrid. We tell no hybrid. So similarly, that hybrid generation was totally destroyed. Now similarly, today also, we have hybrid genes. Who are these genes? Human mind mixing with angelic mind. Now you tell me, today the fallen angels are working or not? Yes, sir. They are working. They are mixing with human mind. Right now, human thoughts. Yes. So, suddenly, what has come up in this world? Big giants. 
brother where brother we can't see any giant we are seeing computer giant we are seeing business giant we are seeing steel magnets iron giant cement giant whichever field you see big 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 business establishment <clears throat> these are the huge giants in this world who are dominating the poor of this world and suppressing them isn't it there what happened the big big giants suppressed the common people they could not live because of the giants because of the hybrid what actually happened on this earth in the first advent in the first world more evil you see in the bible it says the entire earth was corrupt read genesis 6 5 and 6 ashish brother can you read genesis 6 chapter 5 and 6 brother Six chapter five and six brother. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And continually, evil. his thoughts were evil. Today, what do we see in the world? The thoughts of human kind is what are evil. Any social media you open, only evil, 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 bad things only. none of the good things are propagated properly they those things are considered illegal you need to take sanctions permissions all these things to express your rights that those things are not permitted but to, to do evil to express evil to show evil you can do all those things liberty is there why jains are the one who are ruling this world those days the jains were ruling today also what is there the big big political jains he will mind corrupt mind mixed with fallen angels fallen angels are using them you see to corrupt this world friends what are you seeing ha huh? their heart you see was only every thoughts of their heart was evil continually today what have we seen in the news ha huh? you don't marry but yet you live with a girl and that's called live in partnership so you can you can have you can whatever do do whatever you want then later if you don't uh, Want to marry? You can chop it out and keep it in the fridge. You see, and later of dispose it of. That's all considered common today. Each and every news you see, rape, murder, theft, dacaity. You see, ah, uh, suicide bombing, evil, evil things. What sort of evil things? Uh, these things are happening suddenly because this is the mixture of the hybrid. This is what God doesn't like. Now read, read next verse, verse six, brother. Here is six six. Ah, uh. and it repented the Lord that He had made man on the earth, and it grieved Him that He said. Ah, uh, verse eleven. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Oh, verse thirteen. Hmm. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Ah, uh, okay. I, I think Ashish, brother, your mic is disturbing. Lot of disturbance from your mic. Okay, it says, and God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them. You see, with the so the earth was completely filled with violence. That's what today is happening. So, as God destroyed the world during the days of Noah. Today, what is God going to do? Destroy the second world. Okay. Now, God selected whom? Noah. Did God select anybody else apart from Noah, brother? Who was saved in the flood? No, Noah and and his family. Very good. Total, how many members? Eight members. Eight members. So, except Noah, how many members were there? Seven. Seven. What do you mean in seven in the Bible? the complete number very complete. good complete number so jesus is always already completed so seven is the complete body members of jesus who are going to be saved in this end of the second world okay so that's why he says in luke 17 chapter as it was in the days of noah similarly it will be in the days of the 
son of man the next brother continue Re read verse uh, luke 17 you see 1727 mm. they did eat they drank they married wives they were given in marriage until the day that noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all okay they were living a common life no fear at all so today also happened in that only corona came everybody feared but now everybody are relaxed common you know, corona came it will go up and nothing will happen tomorrow something will come is Ayyo, that is all come 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 let us get married come come let us build building uh, let us buy property that's how the people will think no same thing happened in the days of Noah. Today also the world is enjoying it. They're planning a huge, everywhere they're planning a huge, you see, New Year blash this year. Why? Two, three years, no New Year. They want to kick it off. Isn't it? That's what the Bible says. Now, see, this is speaking of the parousia. Now, Epiphania, what will happen? Verse 28, it gives example of Loth. Continue with it. Huh? Likewise also, as it was in the days of Loth, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. 29 also, brother? Hmm, 29. But the, but the same day that Lot, Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Hmm. In, in that day, he which shall be upon the hmm, house. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Verse 29, you read. After oh, 30, which verse? 30, 30. Ah, 30, ah. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Ah, revealed. That word revealed is apocalypsis. So this is speaking of the period of apocalypsis. How? He says, how it happened in the days of Lord. Similarly, it will happen in the days of Son of Man. When he will be revealed for the whole world. It is. See, in Lord's case, what happened actually? If you see, Lord was in Sodom and Gomorrah. God called him several times. He did not come at all. Ultimately, he just escaped by fire. Immediately, what happened? Sodom and Gomorrah was totally destroyed. Correct, no? So, similarly, it says, Sodom and Gomorrah in the Bible means the great Babylon. We are going to see which is the great Babylon in the coming classes. It is speaking about the false churches of this world. So, many God's children are in the false churches of this world where they, uh, and where they conduct the power uh, Lord Supper every week, every month, or whenever they want, and they believe in the uh, immortal soul. Uh, hell is a place of uh, torment. Uh, they believe in the Trinity. They believe that uh, Antichrist is the person who is yet going to come. All this vague and uh, false doctrines. Uh, this is called as Babylon in the Bible. This is called the false churches. Now, Loth is a good person who is still staying there. Why? It doesn't want to come out because he is seeking shelter. Because Sodom and Gomorrah is the best place. A very wealthy place. But until God pulled him, he did not come at all. Once he came out, what happened immediately? God destroyed that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Similarly, God is waiting for God's children to come out of Babylon. Once uh, the true Christians come out of the false churches, immediately what will happen? Uh, the entire church system, the false church system shall be destroyed. And it is in the destruction, the world, world will realize that uh, Christ is the one who is ruling invisibly. Read Revelation 18 4, brother. Revelation 18 4. Mm -hmm. Revelation 18 4, brother. Mm -hmm. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Mm, come out of her that you may not receive her plagues, same as the Loth. So, as Loth was uh, rescued, immediately as he was rescued, he was totally destroyed. And everybody come to know that this is the uh, real truth. Similarly, it will happen in the apocalypse period when the whole people will realize, but, but by that time, the church will be already completed. There won't be any heavenly salvation. The entire world system, the current system shall be destroyed. Okay? So, this is about the epiphania and apocalypse. Okay? So, we'll stop it here. Next week, we're going to see about the rapture. Okay? So, um,